Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about this right here, the RetroTank 2X Pro. I've been fortunate to have this for the past couple months and was one of the first people to actually get my hands on one of these devices. And it comes from Mike Chi. Uh, so what is RetroTank 2X Pro? If you haven't heard of it, what is the original 2X? Uh, it is a upscaler for your retro consoles and actually makes compatible your retro consoles with your flat screen television. It's extremely useful because a lot of your old consoles, if you just plug them right in to your television, sometimes they're not even picked up at all. Uh, and if they do get picked up by your television, you often have to deal with the internal uh, upscaler that comes with TVs and it creates a terrible lag when you're playing games. So the cool thing about this is that it is completely lag free. Uh, and again, it upscales all your consoles uh, as 2x suggests up to two times so you can also pair it with other devices but that's not really the focus of this video today what I would like to do is take us through step by step and show you exactly how to update the firmware on it uh, but first I'm gonna be doing a quick overview for those of you who don't know what the 2x is just to familiarize with it this is also a perfect time to tell you that this video is not sponsored by Mike Chi. I just really appreciate this device. I really appreciate Mike Chi's work on the device and what he's contributed to the retro gaming community. And I hope that those of you who do own one of these find a little bit of value in this video. So for the overview of the RetroTINK 2X Pro, I could easily enough just shoot video with my uh, Canon but all the information is on Mike Chi's website as well, retrotink.com. So I thought I would just go over it as a really quick overview before we get into how to actually update the firmware on the device. Scrolling down a bit, you can see that Mike has a bunch of different products on his website um, from uh, SCART, adapters uh, to this is a RetroTINK 2X that supports SCART. Here's the original 2X Classic. This, uh, up until recently, this was the primary uh, device on the website for upscaling and making compatible, uh, you know, having the zero leg option. Um, what else can we cover here? Without going too much into uh, any of the other products, let's just jump right to the 2X Pro and do the overview. So here's the device right here. You can see that on the front you have the composite cable inputs. Uh, you can also, if you have a device that say the original Nintendo just has the uh, standard RCA cables with the, the you know the red white yellow cables as we all knew uh, being kids growing up um, you can plug those into the green in, uh, input port here serves as the uh, yellow video and of course you have the red and white left and right stereo channels uh, a picture of the little board here without the case is really interesting. You can see on the left hand side here the S video import, which you'd want to use for, say, your Super Nintendo or uh, N64 if you didn't have like an HD RetroVision uh, cable set. Uh, you can see. You can see the micro USB cable import here, the HDMI import. The input and filter buttons here on the top, which we'll go into uh, because you need to use the input button for the update process, so we'll cover that. And various options. The top is a comb filter, and there's a retro function or an auto function. And then on the bottom here, you can uh, set it to pass-through mode, which is really handy for various devices uh, like VHS recordings. I have a really old camera uh, with the CMOS, one the first CMOS uh, sensor ever created in a camera. I have that camera sitting right over here. I'm going to do a video on that camera specifically, but using the RetroTINK 2X Pro, uh, plugging it into my capture card which is going to be really interesting so if you're into things like that stay tuned 
Um, but yeah, you, the up switch position, I believe, is the 2x mode. On Mike's website here, it says the inputs uh, that are supported are composite, S-video, composite cable, uh, shares the green jack, as I had mentioned before, output is digital video, uh, automatic format detection, which is really cool. Uh, so depending on what region you live in, it will uh, pick up your your region and output appropriately. Has a new scan line mode, which came with one of the recent updates. Adjustable comb filtering for retro uh, and video, the 2D comb and notch. USB firmware upgrade compatibility, which is what this video is all about. Uh, yeah, and it says note includes micro USB cord for power, which is what I did. I just plugged my device right here that I'm holding directly into my PC. So, um, oh yeah, let's go over this too. Uh, note for anybody who might want to pick one of these up. The pros ship with the original firmware, which is version 1.0. Uh, and it says the firmware contains the necessary code for the factory to program the anti-piracy measures and perform QC checks and the link to the upgrade. So let's, from here, jump over to the upgrade page and I'll show you how to upgrade the firmware on your RetroTINK 2X Pro. Updating your RetroTINK 2X Pro is a rather straightforward process, uh, but it's really important that you follow the instructions step by step. So we're gonna break it down here. I'm gonna bring the instructions over and we're gonna do it side by side. Uh, I'm gonna update mine and you can follow along and update yours and I hope that it brings a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you can do it side by side with somebody else. If you have any questions or comments on it please let me know down in the comments below and of course you can always go to RetroTink.com and message Mike Chi himself. Uh, he's really good at getting back to people and if you have any issues with your device he's the person to reach out to and he will help you. So you can go to the link down in the description below for the updates and periodically there will be updates on this page that are added and as you can see here there's a change log of everything. I'm not going to go through all the things that Mike's doing to update the device over time but it's really awesome that um, he is updating it from time to time. Uh, but what you want to do is go down and read this. So I'm going to read it to you and then we're going to work through the instructions and I'm going to update mine and feel free to join me and update your device as well. It says here, caution, read carefully before proceeding. Very important. While the bootloader portion of the firmware is protected, making bricking the device unlikely. Bricking, of course, is what happens when you try to update firmware. Something bad happens and you turn your device into a brick essentially it's no good uh, so saying while the portion of the firmware is protected making breaking the device unlikely proceed carefully and that's why we're here due to time constraints at the moment we can only provide limited support until a later date all in red it says do not attempt to flash the hex file directly to the PCB via the ICD pins uh, you must use the RetroTINK software. The firmware contains an anti-piracy measure that can permanently destroy the device. We are not responsible for any damages that can occur in this case. Awesome. So that's pretty straightforward what Mike is saying there. So let's start by downloading the FTDI D2XX drivers and install them. We'll say yes to this. All right, let's go and open up those drivers and install them. All right, here are the drivers right here on my desktop. Uh, I'm using WinRare, but you might have 7-zip or just the built-in Windows uh, extractor for compression. Let's just extract it to its own folder here. Here it is. We'll open it up. There's the executable. I'm going to right click and run it as administrator just to be really safe here. Hit next. We accept the license agreement. Hit next. It's going to copy over some files. That was really quick and it's ready to use. So let's hit finish. 
We'll go back to our instructions here and see what's next. So two, download the RetroTINK firmware update tool and install by unzipping and running RT underscore FW UP. So let's do that now. All right, it brings us to a Dropbox page. So let's download the contents. Direct download. Save it. Here's the file on my desktop. I'm gonna right click on it again, just like the last one and extract it to the desktop. We'll bring this over, open up the file folder. There's RTFWUP. There's a setup here. So this is a newer version of the firmware. So uh, I assume that the setup is going to use the MSI file. And this is all from Mike Chi himself. So I know that it's safe. Uh, we're gonna run the setup file here. And it says, welcome to the RT underscore FWUP setup wizard. So we know that it's working properly. The installer will guide you through the steps required to install the RT underscore FWUP uh, on your computer. And it gives you all the copyright stuff, which is protected by law, all that stuff, which we know all about. Let's hit next and is asking where to set it up. We'll just let it set up in its default directory and hit next and hit next again. Now it's going to install it to your system. We'll just give it a moment here. Installation complete, hit close. Step three says download the appropriate hex file from above for the desired version and device that you own. So on each of these versions, you can see there are two files associated. Each of these are a hex file. The first one is for the RetroTINK 2X Pro. The second is for the 2X SCART device. Uh, mine is a 2X Pro, so, so I'm gonna be selecting the hex file. The link brings you to uh, Mike's Dropbox directory here, just like with the previous file. You just wanna hit OK and save it to your computer. So I've copied the file over to my desktop. Here's the new hex file. And as you can see here, the RetroTINK firmware tool developed by Mike Chi. Okay, so step four. Next, we wanna plug our device into our computer's USB port while holding down the input button. The LED should be red, indicating update mode. So I have my USB cable right here that Mike supplied when I bought the device back in the beginning of the year, back in February. And here's my device right here. So there are two buttons on the top of the retro tank and I'll bring this up to the camera so you can see it. This one and this one. And the one we want is the input button. So the one closest to the HDMI port right here. This is the button you wanna press, not that one this one you can see it on if my camera focuses you probably can't see it but in little tiny uh, um, plastic injected font you can see it says input right there so you know which button is the input button just make sure you're holding the right one as the instructions suggest and you want to plug your micro usb into the micro usb port right there so let me try to do that without bunk bumping my microphone. Just like that, plugging the USB device in. And I'm gonna take the other end right here and I'm gonna hold down the input button, just as the instructions say, and plug it into my USB port. And the LED on the device should turn red, indicating that we have entered update mode. So let's do that. So as you can see there, the LED has turned red, so we are now in update mode. So let's move on to step five. It says, run the RetroTINK firmware update tool. The installer will have left a shortcut on your desktop. So let's do that. And also I think we can just, so we can bring that over like that. And we're gonna run the tool. I have the device sitting on the top of my desktop tower. So here's the app. Um, 
The installer will have left a shortcut. Yes, it did. Hit search. Search. Uh, you should see FT232R. Yes. USB UART. And there we go. It's sitting right there in the app. Let's move this over so my camera isn't blocking it and you can see right there. That's what we're looking for. Hit load hex and point to the hex file you downloaded. So I, uh, I opened up the hex file in the app and you can see there it is right there. RT2X Pro dot hex. There it is. Hit flash. The update process should start. If the window freezes, that is okay. Just so you know, I know you might be nervous about it. I get nervous about doing this stuff too, whether it's uh, you know loading a new ROM on my Android phone or update or updating the firmware on my router. All this stuff causes me immense anxiety or like soft modding a console. Just know, I'm glad that Mike put it there. It might freeze, but it's okay. Just don't do anything and wait. Uh, so if the window freezes, that is okay. The update should complete within a minute or so. So let's hit flash on the app here and we'll wait. Uh, and we have a warning here, firmware update starting. Please do not power off the device. Super important. Don't touch the USB port, don't touch the device, just let it do its thing. And we're gonna hit okay. And we're seeing it run. And there we go, firmware update complete. And we get the message down in the app, flash programming complete, programming up, uh, programming complete, Rebooting headset. Uh, so we can hit OK. And there you go, step nine. Your device should uh, reboot and be ready to use. Uh, you can't see it right now, but my device has, the LED on it has turned from red to green, indicating that the update process has completed, uh, just as the app is telling us here, and we're good to go. Step 10 says, if you accidentally interrupt the process, just start over from step four. So even though Mike has all in bold letters here and it might look really scary, uh, it, it, if you follow the instructions through, you should be okay. And um, if you have an issue uh, with it or the process is interrupted, it says you can start from step four and try to go through it again. If you have additional issues uh, continuing through the process, please contact Mike. I know that He's an awesome guy. He's gonna help you figure it all out and solve the issue. And just like that, your RetroTank 2X Pro is now updated. It's a pretty simple process, but uh, I know a lot of people are a little nervous and hesitant about doing things like this, and that's why I wanted to make this video. It's sometimes just easier to follow a video and go step by step with somebody else. Um, but yeah, I'll leave a link down in the description below uh, to this website. If you don't already own one of these things, they're pretty affordable and really it is one of the best purchases that I've made in recent history. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope that I helped you. And I hope to see you again in a future video. Thanks again for being here and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers.